What were some of the messages that kind of prompted you and the band to really want to revisit this album? Like what were fans saying about the album in terms of their relationship to it? Um, I think the biggest thing that we kept seeing um, on all the social media sites was everyone wanted us to do a 15 year anniversary tour. That was the biggest thing and everyone was like, you know, there's a lot of questions, why aren't you going on tour for this? And we were just, we weren't on the road at the time, so I thought, yeah, why aren't we doing it? I mean, we didn't even know it was the 15th anniversary, really. So once we sort of found that out, we decided, well, we'll just go do a short run. Because we're supposed to be in the studio right now, you know, working on new music. So we just kept it just short and quick. There was a couple of years, I think you celebrated the 10 year anniversary of it as well mm -hmm. uh, with the band. Is there anything like notably different in terms of those five years uh, in terms of playing the material like that you notice when you're playing it on stage or maybe when you're uh, practicing to go on tour? Yeah, well, I just think this time around we're just a we're a much different band. We're a five piece band now and it's just we just play in a different way and it just feels like a totally different band. So putting this show together was completely different than the one, you know, for the 10 year anniversary. It was totally different. In terms of prepping for, you know, prepping to take the songs back out on the road, uh, what were some of the surprises you found in maybe like rehearsing to when you actually got to play them on stage? Um, I guess it wasn't necessarily surprises, but it was a reminder of how short some of these songs are and how quick they are. That the whole album is only about 30 minutes, so to turn it into a whole show, which is like an hour and something, we didn't, we weren't sure how long it was going to be, but to turn a 30 minute record into a full night of a show was kind of like, okay, this is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more difficult than we thought. And then is that why you're kind of, you know, you'd see different thematic elements like playing all of the short, really short, mm -hmm. fast punk songs kind of back this to back. This sort of to led back. to that song, yeah. And yeah. It's like sort of the history of how we got to that song. Um, yeah, we just thought of doing some ideas like that and um, a little bit of description or storytelling about some of the songs um, and just extending some of the, the breakdowns and doing different things with some of the songs. Because when, when your band is on stage, you're, you specifically are kind of this master of ceremonies, and especially for that kind of tour, you're like, you know, as you said, you're like talking a little bit about the songwriting, a little bit mm -hmm. how the songs came together. And it seemed like, you know, it seems like you really relish that, and it's, it's kind of cool to like go out and, and share this experience. What are some of the, like, what can you see when you're up on stage and you're talking about this stuff? Maybe you're illuminating fans about stuff that they don't really know about, like how certain songs came together. If you're playing like a, song that maybe Sum 41's not really played that much live. What can you really see in terms of like the fans reacting to that when you're up on stage? I think when you play a song that doesn't normally get played, you can see the excitement in people's faces um, because it, we're probably not going to go play it again after this tour. So it's, they know that this is like kind of one of the only times they're ever going to see it. Sometimes it's a lot of the super fans, that's their favorite song, the song that you never play. Um, so. There's definitely, like you can see it in people's faces that they're excited that their favorite song that we would never play is being played right now and probably never again. And what about from when you, I know this is a pretty brief run, it's only like about a month or so of shows, mm -hmm. but in like the first couple shows you are, versus maybe where you are now, which is about like a little more than halfway through the tour, uh, is there, like what do you think some of the differences are there in terms of maybe performances or like anything on stage? We're sort of at that stage now, we're two weeks into the tour and you know, compared to the first two or three shows, it's, we're much tighter now. Like, now I can be on stage and start thinking about other things. And I can still perform the song. Whereas the first couple shows, that's, you're only thinking about the next lyric coming up and the next part you're supposed to play. Because you're not quite sure and you kind of, for, you're, you might forget. Whereas now I can write a grocery list while I'm on stage if I had to. So is that like one of the examples of things that you're doing <laughs> when you're on stage? Sometimes I do, yeah. And is, is there any thought given to like new music? I mean, you mentioned you're supposed to be in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, and you also said that at the show, too. You were like, you know, we have these plans to do this stuff, but we wanted to be yeah, here this, for you. Yeah, this whole year is supposed to be just working on new music for, you know, something coming out in 2019. And we're going to do a full tour and, you know, play all the songs next year. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just sort of in the writing and demoing phase right now. Can you do much writing when you're on the road? It's difficult, but um, I do. I do a lot of writing on the road. Um, uh, sometimes, like I was saying, where you can, your mind can go somewhere else on stage, sometimes I can be working on songs in my head. Because um, I can picture a song that I'm already working on and knowing that 
that riff is really cool, but maybe it needs to speed up to this tempo that we're playing right now. You know, things like that I can kind of work out on stage. I also wanted to ask, I found, uh, I thought it would be kind of fitting, so I went and found an old MTV News interview from 2002, like around okay. about when the album came out, and you were talking about still waiting. You were saying, it's no secret that the world doesn't get along and there's all this hatred. It's everything to do with how this world functions. And I thought of this because you also kind of, at the show the other night, were talking about how, you know, you're like, we're going to play this one. This one's mm -hmm. unfortunately still relevant. I mean, how do you feel that the, the message in that is kind of still evergreen at this point? Because I, I think it will always be. I think, you know, history repeats itself. It's like it, the things that we're upset and worried about and seem like it's the end of the world, those, the, the situations change, but the feeling always stays the same, it seems. Like, it felt like everything was, the world was going to come to an end back then, you know, and it still feels the same. It's just a different person in charge, you know, different people. So, but it feels the same. I think it'll always feel the same. And there was one, you also had a, uh, a quote about, you were, you were kind of illuminating some of the, like, thoughts behind uh, the writing of some of the songs, and I think for Hell Song, you were sharing a story about, like, you wrote about a friend who mm -hmm. was going through, you said in your friend group, it was, like, one of the major shakeups in terms of, like, her health and all mm -hmm. that stuff. What does that feel like to kind of revisit this, stuff and, like, to know, I guess, kind of the headspace that you're in, and, and the people in your life who may be reflected in some of these songs, like, to look at that maybe 15 years out, what is that like? It's, it's hard for me to think about what songs are about. Like, I never really think about that once they're written. I think about it more when I'm writing it, and then once it's written and recorded, I sort of forget about where I was at or what I was thinking and who I was writing it about. They just become the songs, and they just sort of become different to me, I guess. And they kind of give, I'm sure, like, as an artist, you also realize that, like, they give, you give them over to the fans at a certain point as well. Well, yeah, so I was going to say, they don't really feel like mine anymore. They, once music comes out, I don't, I just don't feel like, I always say my favorite time of making a record is before it's all come out, when it's fully completed and I have the mix mastered version and it's still just mine and no one's heard it really yet, you know, and I can, there's, there's no, people don't love a certain song or hate a certain song. I haven't heard what people think. They, there's no opinions about anything. It's just my own opinion. Um, so once it comes out, it's kind of not mine anymore. Yeah, and you, you feel closest to the material, like in that space. In that, that time spot. when it's finished, I have nothing to do anymore. And I can just listen to it as a piece. That's when I feel like it's, that's my favorite part of making a record. I was also going to ask, I think, does this look, in fact, you know, you were talking about fans writing in saying, like, do an anniversary tour, do an anniversary mm -hmm. tour, we want these, these shows. Um, do people feel the same way about, like, All Killer No Filler, for example? Or we like get a lot of Chuck. Um, which is going to be next year, but we're going to have a new record out, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there, there's All Killer, there's Chuck. I mean, people just, I mean, I, I'm not really one, to, I'm not big on social media, but, you know, I don't know what, maybe people say other ones too. I've heard Underclass Hero, but, you know, is it really everybody? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Another thing I wanted to ask, too, about this album is, like what some 41 wanted the videos to be and you were mm -hmm. like pretty adamant about we always want a performance element in these videos like working with mark classfeld at that time who obviously did like uh he worked with you guys like pretty consistently yeah. and then you revisited uh, to do fake my own death which yeah. was cool is that the you know this kind of like here's our performance first but we're going to kind of wrap it in some like some kind of youthful like humor element too is that kind of what you well i think envisioned? it's just it's the personalities it's the sides of our band it's just who we are as people, we're pretty serious about the music, but we do have a sense of humor. So we like both to kind of be reflected in the videos because it just kind of c happens naturally. We've always felt like we're not really that funny as people. Like we don't want to act in the videos and stuff like that. So, but we want to have some humor to it. So we'll put something that's funny. We'll do what we do, which is just perform. Do you have a favorite video from that era? Still waiting. How it's come? For some reason, that video has been all of our favorite videos since we made it. Probably because the day was really fun and it was a simple shoot. It just kind of came, every, all those videos came together so quickly. It was just like a couple ideas got shot around and then it just happened. And they were always really fun. But um, I think that one for us was like our first video that we had shot. There was only a one day shoot, so it was really quick, where the other ones felt like they were, you know, really early 5 a.m. calls till, you know, as late as you can go. And there were two days, and it was just, and you had days of prep. It just felt like a whole week, and it was really tiring. We're yeah. still waiting. We just showed up and did it, and we laughed, and it was over. 
this might be, you might have kind of already answered this, but I was just curious, like in talking about some of those faster punker, you know, more punkish songs that you're kind of lining up in a row on this tour um, and kind of talking about revisiting some of the songs like thematically, especially for like A and I C, you know, to kind of like be able to preface that and know that like people are going to be super into that because that's like obviously kind of a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I know that also never really left the Sum 41 set list kind of for that same reason. Is that mm -hmm. kind of the same thing, like the atmosphere you wanted to capture? I don't know. I just, we haven't played that in a while. Um, we did play it for a long time. Um, I mean, it's not a very good song. You know, it's just not even really a song. It's just kind of a bunch of shouting and really, you know, fast music. But um, for some reason, yeah, it kind of got some attention, like probably because of the name. And um, the song necessarily wasn't even about that. The song was written. It just didn't, it needed a name, really. And that's where that name came from. It was just sort of a last second. I remember that TV show was on a lot. And it was always on in the lounge at the studio, and it was so irritating. And you know that just sort of came out. And we named it that. You had kind of also mentioned just earlier, like talking about the writing and the recording of this next Sum 41 project and the next album and all that stuff. Is there anything like that you are particularly stoked about right now in terms of that process, or is it too early to tell? It's. I, I think there's some really good stuff there. I'm excited. Normally I'm really nervous at this early of a stage because uh, it's just there's, there's not enough material to get excited about, whereas what I have already, the riffs and the things that are kind of coming together, I actually am pretty excited about. I feel like it's, I'm in a safe zone to feel like, all right, this is going to be cool, whereas a lot of times I'm like, I don't have enough yet to really feel confident that where it's going. I think this is going to be, I'm excited about next year. And you said at the show the other night too at Terminal 5 that, uh, Fake My Own Death kind of came out of this mm -hmm. session of, of revisiting some earlier material. Um, are, you, are you doing that for this album at all? I don't think there's any more material I could find if I wanted to. I think at this point everything's been used. That was the last probably little bit of an idea. And it was such a small little bit of an idea that became a whole song. Um, and I don't think, I mean, maybe there's some little bits left somewhere. I don't know. Like a, a riff or something It'd like that? It'd be hard to find, though. <laughs> 